Man, this episode ends on a kind of a somber note, guys. Very sad, very somber. All of our heroes and characters basically being defeated with this expedition that they recently went on. We are on episode 22 of Attack on Titan. We only have three more episodes after this one, which I'm really excited. And season two is going to be upon us before we know it. But episode 22 deals with some amazing action sequences in the beginning of this episode. But then as we kind of go along, our characters are basically morally and just depressed and defeated. And they're heading back to the district to where they're basically going to have to tell everyone, we have nothing to show for our efforts on this expedition. And, in, and while on this expedition, we have lost a lot of men. But going back to the beginning parts of this episode, because I got to talk about the Mikasa and Levi versus female Titan fight. This is such a good, good fight because in the situation at hand is that the female Titan has Eren in its mouth. And we have Levi and Mikasa following along and getting the path, trying to get a uh, situation under control. Levi's coming up with a plan, tells Mikasa to stay back and let him handle the situation. Be a distraction for him so that we can go in and attack the female Titan. And this is where we get to see Levi let loose in this episode. We already know that Levi is a very skilled combatant within the Survey Corps. But this right here is where we actually get to see more of Levi's combat skills and he absolutely wrecks the female Titan. Like he goes in, he's spinning like a top and I love how his own fighting style, the way he holds his blades. He has his own unique style with it with, when, when it comes to fighting with his 3D maneuver gear, which I absolutely love. I love when he's spinning like a corkscrew up the female Titan's arm and then ends up gouging out her eyes and basically does the kind of like the same thing that the Levi squad was doing when they were fighting the female Titan. But this right here, he's doing it in such blinding speed that the female Titan can't keep up with what he is dishing out. And she just has to back up against a tree, block the nape of her neck. But uh, like Levi makes short work of this because he ends up cutting the tendons of her arm again to where she can't use her arms. She's basically left defenseless. And this is the part where Mikasa kind of messes up in a way because she was told to stay back and let Levi handle the situation. But as soon as she sees an opening that she believes she can take, I know Mikasa is a great fighter. She's got amazing skills, but she read the situation wrong because the female Titan was predicting for Mikasa to come in during that situation. So we have her basically re regaining control of her arm, about to swat Mikasa out of the way. But Levi knows the situation, goes in and saves her, but then ends up twisting or breaking his ankle in the process. But he uses this opportunity, to, since he's so close to the female Titan, to actually slice open her mouth, and he ends up grabbing Aaron, and then they retreat from this situation, leaving the female Titan right there to heal up and just get out of the situation. And But what's very interesting, too, and I, like rewatching it again, it makes me kind of think, because they... Levi looks back and he sees the female Titan crying and you've never seen a Titan within this world to cry before. We've never seen Aaron in his Titan form cry and we've never seen regular Titans cry. And we already know that there is someone like Aaron, a human that can transform into a Titan within the female Titan. And it kind of makes you ask the question, why is the female Titan crying in this situation? Is it because that she failed at her mission or is it because that she actually didn't want to do what she actually was ordered to do in this situation and she is regretting all the stuff that she did? Kind of makes you think about the overall situation and how the female Titan is kind of viewing this overall predicament that she's currently in right now. But once we move away from that, Everyone regroups within the Survey Corps and they end up making their way back to the district. And this is where like they just punch you in the field right now. They're like, they're grabbing your heart and saying like, oh, you wanna feel some more? And they start squeezing because they end up showing Oreo, Petra, Eld, and Gunther's family members back at the district. And they're like getting word that the Survey Corps is actually coming back to the district. And some of them are like, oh, maybe I should prepare an extra meal for dinner for when they get home. And it just makes you feel really, really sad because they are just completely unaware of the situation that their loved ones have perished on this expedition. And like this t this episode just likes to grab your heart and to just squeeze it and it's like, oh, <laughs> you like the feels, don't you? It's like, it's like damn, that, that, hits, that hits you right there. But moving away from that, not only do we have that with their family members but there's a lot of people within the survey corps upset with the fact that they haven't recovered every member that has died on this expedition and even they tell them it's like what what is a dead body missing in action gonna make a difference to people back at home because whether we recover them or not they are dead bodies and even though this is very like morally gray and you could view this situation one way or the other the fact of the matter is these people are dead and bringing them back or not doesn't really make that much a difference sure family members if they bring back a body will have something to actually bury when they get home but i think in this situation it's kind of better just to know the fact that they did die and you don't get to see their corpse 
But then we have two characters completely fuck up the entire situation that everyone is in because as they're making way back towards the wall, the two characters that were very upset about leaving their friend behind end up going back and actually having Titans follow them as they're trying to catch up with the Survey Corps. So they're actually leading Titans to the Survey Corps and one of them ends up dying in the process. And it just goes to show that it's like, sure, you have loved ones that you really cared about, but are you willing to sacrifice everyone within the Survey Corps for this one person that isn't even around anymore? You are putting in jeopardy everyone's lives of the Survey Corps because you were just unafraid to let go of someone that has already passed. But it's because of these two people that everyone within the Survey Corps has to end up sacrificing the bodies that they did end up recovering on this expedition. And so they have to basically throw them off the wagons and actually lure the Titans away from them so that they can just go after these dead bodies. And it sucks too because they show Petra being thrown off and you can see Levi's face. He, You know he's upset, but he's just very stoic and trying to remain emotional in this situation and it even comes back when they get back at the wall but I'll talk about that in a little bit because as soon as after everyone you know is safe from the Titans they don't have to worry about it anymore I like what Levi does because he ended up taking a patch I think from uh, Petra's uh, suit and ended up giving it to him saying it was from his friends like this is the memory we have of them and it's a very nice moment between Levi and this crew members like he could have just gotten like scolded out the ass for what he decided to do with his decision but I like how Levi handled this overall situation and then we also get Aaron waking up and realizing that like Mikasa and Levi ended up having to say Save him and then we get back to the wall and this parallels greatly with the events of episode one and this episode right here because back when Aaron and Mikasa were little they were these little kids on the sidelines looking at the heroic survey corps even though they came back defeated they they were viewed as heroes in Aaron's eyes and now the role is actually reversed because now he's coming back as a survey corps member he knows the horrors that goes on once you leave the walls and he views the situation entirely differently now but now he actually sees a kid that was in his situation all the way back in episode one saying the same exact things that he was saying because he was just so naive and didn't understand the overall situation and this actually affects Aaron I think a lot and this is what caused him to actually break down and cry because I think he now understands the overall severity of the situation that the survey corps every time they leave those walls they are completely unprotected and are basically exposed to the unknown circumstances that could befall them on the expeditions because these titans are merciless. But I have one question for you guys because there's a moment within this situation to where they're walking back into the walls that Levi is met with Petra's father and there's this dialogue going back and forth mostly just from Petra's father. Levi isn't talking at all but Petra's father brings up the word marriage while he's talking with Levi and I my question is was Levi and Petra like engaged were they supposed to get married? I, d I didn't bother looking this up because I'd rather bring it up in this video because I actually want to know from you guys because I was watching this and it made, made me question it's like wait whoa wait a minute this makes me view the situation between Petra and Levi a lot differently because if Petra was so devoted to Levi did they actually have romantic feelings towards one another was there actually a marriage in the future between these two characters if you guys know the answer to that please let me know because I don't want to bother looking it up just let me know if this is actually true. Is this confirmed? I mean, it seemed very odd once it came up. It caught me off guard too because I didn't actually remember this from watching it the first time I watched it. So were Levi and Petra a couple? And it just like I was just like, whoa, this is this is different. I did not expect that. So the ending of this episode ends with Armin giving this monologue basically saying due to the failure of the expedition beyond the walls Aaron is now being handed over to the military and they don't really know what's going to happen to Aaron at this point. All we know is that the expedition failed and due to its failing Aaron is now going to be handed over to the military and we're just kind of left on this cliffhanger and we don't really know. It's very somber and sad and it just shows our heroes defeated with this expedition that they recently went on. So the episode starts off really good with an action sequence but then as it just goes on just gets sadder and sadder and sadder until we're just left on that cliffhanger it's like shit Aaron's getting turned over now what so that's the end of this episode this episode review I want to hear from you guys your thoughts please answer my question about Levi and Petra I really want to know what the hell's going on with that situation because it's just very very interesting to me but besides that did you like getting to see Levi let loose in this episode in the beginning when he was fighting the female Titan? And how do you feel about the overall moral of the survey, like the morals of the Survey Corps, how they're handling with the fact that, yes, we can't, rec can't recover everyone. And how do you feel about those two members 
going back and trying to rescue their dead comrades, but then thus endangering everyone within the Survey Corps. So just leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you guys feel like subscribing, feel free to do so. I love talking with you guys about Attack on Titan, and Season 2 is going to be upon us before we know it, because I only got three more episodes until I'm done reviewing Attack on Titan Season 1, and then Season 2 is going to be here before you know it. So I'm really looking forward to that, guys. Episode 23's review will be out tomorrow, but until then, I'll talk with you guys later. Alright guys, see you later.